beauties? Rosie here from rosiepeña.com, a fashion, sewing, and lifestyle blog. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here. In today's video, we're going to be making McCall's 7968, which is this really beautiful sheath style dress. The sheath style dress is very similar to a shift dress, but it does have a lot more shape and structure to it. The sleeves are pleated along the shoulders, and it makes a really beautiful statement sleeve as well. So this is a really cool fashion forward pattern. The fabric that we're going to be using in today's video is a stretch crepe that I got from fabric.com. I'll have a link in the description bar below. So a few of the suggested fabrics on the back of the pattern are wool blend, cotton blend, poplin, and velvet. But I think you can use a fabric that has a really nice shape and structure to it. So any kind of a dress weight, medium weight fabric will do awesome with this pattern. The dress is not lined, but you are gonna need an invisible zipper. And I'll talk more about that whenever we get into the sewing tutorial. So go ahead and grab your fabric and your pattern and we can go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, in today's video, we're gonna be working on McCall's 7968. It's this really beautiful sheath style dress. It has bust starts and waist starts as well. We're also gonna need some interfacing for this project we're going to need 24 inch invisible zipper and I'm also going to grab some of this tracing paper this tracing paper is the best one that I've found so far the fabric that we're going to be using in today's video is a stretch crepe that I got from fabric.com I'll have it linked in the description bar below as well as a link to all the tools that we'll be using in today's video as always you just want to make sure you have your fabric folded with right sides together and the selvage edges meeting so the selvage edge is just the finished or neaten edge of the fabric place your pattern pieces according to the grain line on top of your fabric. Make sure you transfer all of those markings from your pattern piece onto your fabric using your tracing wheel and your tracing paper. The pattern pieces that we'll need are pattern piece number one. This is your front and it's cut on the fold. So when you open it up, you should have one single layer of fabric. Make sure you transfer those bust starts and those waist starts as well. Next, you'll need two of pattern piece number two, which is your back. So you'll have two separate pieces which are mirror images of each other. Just like before, make sure you transfer all of those markings on your pattern piece. That's very important whenever we get to the sewing process. Next, you'll need pattern piece number three, which is your front facing, and this is cut on the fold, just like the front piece is cut on the fold. Next, you'll need pattern piece number four, which is your back facing. So you should have two of these just like your back piece. Next, you'll need pattern piece number five, which is your sleeve. And of course, you should have two of these. Go ahead and transfer those pleat markings as well. We'll need those whenever we make the pleats on our sleeve. You'll need two of pattern piece number nine, which is your sleeve head and make sure you pay attention to the grain line on that pattern piece. Now we'll go ahead and get into the pinning. So we're going to grab our back facing pieces and we're going to pin those with right sides together to our front facing piece at the short shoulder seam. So go ahead and just place that with right sides together and pin in place. Now we're going to work on our bust dart. So I'm going to fold my fabric with right sides together and I'm going to pin at the dart Point. So the very bottom point of the bust dart. I'm going to pin there first and then I'm going to pin my dart legs with right sides together. So I'm going to poke through one side of the dart leg and make sure I'm coming out on the opposite side of the other dart leg. So again, just pin that with right sides together and then go ahead and repeat that process for all of the remaining darts. finish pinning all of the darts on your front pattern piece go ahead and repeat those steps to your back pattern pieces as well so you should have a back waist dart on one side and a back waist dart on the other side
take our fabric to our sewing machine and I'm going to first sew the facing pieces at the shoulder seam with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and neaten your seam with a serger or your desired method once you finish and then go ahead and neaten the lower edge of the facing piece as well. Next you want to go ahead and sew all of your bust darts in place. Then start sewing your dart at the dart legs. So whenever you match those two dart legs together with right sides facing, that's where you're going to start your sewing. You can back stitch at the beginning of your seam, but whenever you get to the dart point, the end of your bust dart, you want to leave a few inches of loose thread and you're just going to tie that off with a double knot. Go ahead and repeat that same exact process to all of your remaining darts. So every time you finish sewing a seam, you want to make sure you neaten that seam at your ironing table. So go ahead and just neaten all of your just sewn seams. And whenever you press your darts, you want to press your waist darts toward the center of your garment. And you always want to press your bust darts facing down. pressing all of your darts you just want to grab your back pieces with right sides facing and you're going to pin along the entire center back seam we're going to sew from the bottom up and we're going to sew first with a regular length stitch but whenever we get to that small marking that we made for our zipper we're going to sew from there all the way up with a basting stitch this is the method that i like to use whenever i insert an invisible zipper Go ahead and take your fabric to your sewing machine and again start from the bottom of your seam using a regular length stitch and whenever you get to that small marking for your zipper we're going to sew from there up with a basting stitch. So a basting stitch is just the longest stitch setting on your machine. 
You don't have to do this step, but anytime I'm working with an invisible zipper, I like to make sure that those coils are pressed far away from the zipper tape. So I open my zipper and I bring a cool iron in, making sure it's not too hot so I won't melt the plastic zipper. And then I'm just gonna press those coils away from the zipper tape. This is gonna help make sure that whenever we set our invisible zipper in our seam, we're stitching as close as we possibly can to those coils so that whenever we wear our garment, you cannot see the zipper tape at all. Now working on that seam that we just sewn, I'm gonna press that seam open and I also finish the edges with a serger. You can finish it with a serger, a zigzag stitch, bias tape, whatever you prefer to neaten those edges of the seam. And I'm just gonna press that seam open. And then I'm gonna bring in some Wonder Tape. I'll have it linked in the description bar below. This tape is really helpful anytime you're inserting an invisible zipper. So I'm just gonna bring in that Wonder Tape and I'm gonna place that along the zipper area on both sides of the seam. And then you just wanna remove that white backing off of the Wonder Tape. This is gonna expose the glue sticky side. Then you wanna bring your zipper in closed with the right sides facing down. So the zipper pull is facing the wrong side of the fabric. And you just wanna gently press on that zipper so that it can attach to the wonder tape. Go ahead and just repeat that until you get to the bottom of your zipper, centering the zipper over the seam. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my invisible zipper foot and place that on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna be working on one side of the zipper tape and one side of the seam allowance. And I'm just gonna baste that zipper in place. So go ahead and just sew all the way down the zipper tape and the side seam. Again, you're just working on the seam of the garment, not the actual right side of the fabric. Once you've sewed one side of the zipper tape to the seam allowance, go ahead and repeat that to the other side of the zipper tape as well. The next step for attaching our invisible zipper is to open that seam that we just sewed. So remember we stopped at the dot and then we sewed with the basting stitch. Now I want you to open that seam with your seam ripper. So gently pull on those basting threads to expose your zipper. Once you've removed all of those basting threads, go ahead and open your zipper and then we're gonna take our fabric to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew again, working on the zipper tape and the seam allowance, but this time we're gonna sew very close to those coils. So just take your fabric to your sewing machine and you wanna sew with your invisible zipper foot still on your machine, adjust your needle if needed, and then go ahead and just sew very close to those coils, as close as you can without getting on top of the actual coil.
Now that we've successfully attached our invisible zipper, I'm just going to go ahead and gently press on the right side of my fabric using a silk organza pressing cloth so that I don't damage my fabric. So go ahead and just press that seam to neaten. Now we're going to grab our front and place it to our back with the right sides together and we're going to pin along both shoulder seams. Take your fabric to your sewing machine and sew along both shoulder seams with 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, making sure to back stitch at the beginning of your seam and at the end of your seam as well. Also make sure to remove those pins as you go. seams with the serger you can use a serger or your desired method and then I'm going to press those shoulder seams to the back of the garment and then I like to use this clapper tool to make sure that I set those seams in place press those shoulder seams towards the back it's time to attach our neck facing so go ahead and open the zipper slightly and then you want to bring your facing piece in with right sides together and you're going to pin that along the neckline of the garment make sure you have 5 8 of an inch extended from your back facing and the edge of your zipper tape Go ahead and take your fabric to your sewing machine and we're going to sew along the pinned edge with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Again, making sure to remove those pins as you go and also backstitch at the beginning and the end of your seam. Now we're going to go ahead and work on some under stitching. So go ahead and press that seam allowance up towards the facing and you're going to sew on the right side of the facing, making sure to catch that seam allowance underneath. So go ahead and just sew very close to that seam. Again, you're working on the facing and the seam allowance. Once you've done all of your understitching, go ahead and press that 5 eighths of an inch in towards the facing and then fold your facing down. You also want to trim off that excess seam allowance under your facing as well. Slip stitch your facing in place and then we're going to go ahead and press our neckline to neaten. So working on the right side of my fabric along that neckline, I'm just going to gently press to neaten that seam. Now we can bring our front to our back with right sides together and we're going to pin along both side seams. So I like to start at the bottom of my seam and place a pin. Then I like to place a pin at the other side of the seam and just go ahead and evenly pin all the way throughout. Thank you. 
both side seams, go ahead and just take your fabric to your sewing machine and sew with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Again, backstitch at the beginning and the end of your seams, making sure to remove those pins as you go. Now we're going to work on our sleeve. We're going to make those pleats along the sleeve head. So we're going to be working from the right side of the fabric. So the right side of my fabric is facing up, but I'm going to be using those markings that are on the wrong side of the fabric. So look underneath and grab one of those pleat marks, and then you're going to fold it up to meet the opposite edge of the pleat mark. Go ahead and pin that in place. Repeat that step to all of your pleats. grab our sleeve head which is pattern piece number nine and we're going to fold that with wrong sides together right along the fold line so just fold it in half along the fold line and you can use your iron to press it in place then you want to pin the raw open edges with your sewing pins go ahead and repeat that to the other sleeve head as well our fabric to our sewing machine and I'm going to first baste those sleeve heads in place along the pinned edges. So go ahead and just sew that with a basting stitch. Then you want to bring your sleeve pieces in and sew with a basting stitch along all of those pleats. So all of the edges that you pinned you just want to sew with 5 eighths of an inch using a basting stitch. Now that we've basted those pleats in place, we're going to bring our sleeve head in and we're going to pin that to the wrong side of the sleeve, matching the dots of the sleeve head to the dots of the sleeve. So go ahead and just pin that in place and then you want to sew with a basting stitch. Repeat that to your remaining sleeve head and your remaining sleeve. Once you've basted those sleeve heads in place, go ahead and fold your sleeve onto itself with the right sides together and you're going to pin along that underarm seam. So go ahead and just place a pin at the bottom, place a pin at the top, and then pin evenly throughout the underarm seam. Go ahead and take that to your sewing machine and then sew with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance using a regular length stitch. Repeat that to your remaining sleeve as well.
in the seam of your sleeve and the lower edge of your sleeve as well then you want to take that to your pressing table and you're going to press the hem up so i'm going to press one and a quarter inch up to the wrong side of the fabric and i'm just going to use my iron to gently press that in place repeat that to your remaining sleeve as well again using one and a quarter of an inch hem Take your sleeves to your sewing machine and sew that hem in place. So go ahead and just sew very close to that serged or neaten edge using a regular length stitch. Once you've sewn both sleeve hems in place, it's time to make some basting stitches across the sleeve head. Basting stitches, again, are just the longest stitch setting on your machine. You wanna leave a few inches of loose thread along both ends of the seam. Then you just wanna pull on the loose threads to gather the sleeve head. Go ahead and place your sleeve with the right side facing out into the garment armhole. You want to pin that again with the right side of the sleeve facing the right side of the garment. Pin at the underarm seams and then go ahead and just evenly pin all the way throughout the armhole, making sure to adjust your gathers as you go. Once you have both sleeves evenly pinned in place, go ahead and take your garment to your sewing machine and you're going to sew with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I like to start at that underarm seam. Again, go ahead and backstitch at the beginning and the end of your seam and make sure to remove those pins as you go. Once you've attached your sleeves and neatened that seam with the serger or your desired method, it's time to sew the hem of our garment. So go ahead and take your garment to your ironing table and press that hem up by one and a quarter of an inch, just like your sleeve. Go ahead and press that up all the way around using your iron and your seam gauge to help you. Once you have that hem evenly pressed up, 
go ahead and take your garment to your sewing machine and sew very close to that surged edge using a regular length stitch. Go ahead and trim off any loose threads and then you just want to take your garment to your ironing table and give it one final press, gently pressing that hem in place. Once you finish with that, you can turn your garment with the right sides facing out and admire all of your hard work. This is my favorite step of the sewing process. So go ahead and just place your garment with right sides facing out and you are all done with McCall's 7968. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you stick around to the end where I'll insert more photos of me wearing this beautiful dress. All right, you guys, you are all done sewing McCall's 7968. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had so much fun filming it for you guys. Hopefully you learned something new. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure you hit like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome sew along videos. And also check out the blog, rosypena.com, where I'll have more photos of me wearing this beautiful dress. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.